Hi guys. It is an exciting Sunday night. We're in the trailer in the swamp. It is Sunday, November 6, 2023. And uh, so if you've been hanging with me this far, you know what is happening here. So I am, uh, good Lord, more than halfway through uh, this book that I wrote in 1980, Maurice and the Rainbow Maker, about a little mole, Mo or Maurice the Mole, on his wild adventure. So uh, we're in the middle of chapter five, the pinnacle of perfection. So Mo has just drank from the fountain of knowledge and uh, as he gets higher and higher towards the pinnacle of perfection. So let's find out if little Mo makes it or not. Take it away. <clears throat> the going was getting rougher by the minute. The mountain was getting steeper and steeper, making it hard for Mo to hold on to the piece of rainbow. He slipped and fell several times skinning his knees. <clears throat> the mountainside got so steep and the weather turned so chilly that pretty soon not even grass could find a place to take root. Huffing and puffing, Maurice slowly worked his way toward a fat boulder perched a few feet above him. Mo reached the boulder and collapsed against it. The big rock, instead of being cold and hard, was warm and soft. Mo thought that was strange, but because so many things up above seemed strange to Mo, he learned not to question them. Who are you, and where do you think you're going? Barked a husky voice from behind Mo. The surprised little mole jumped up and turned around. It was then that he saw the boulder he'd been leaning against was not a boulder at all. It was a seal, and not a very nice seal at that. I'm sorry, apologize, Mo. I didn't mean to lie down on you like that. My name is Mo, and I'm going to the pinnacle of perfection to find the rainbow maker. Is that okay? No. As a matter of fact, that is not okay with me, bellowed the seal. Its seventeen chins and fat belly shook like jelly with rage. And who is this rainbow maker? You know, explained Mo in a trembling voice, the guy who makes rainbows. I need to give him this piece of rainbow I found yesterday. He showed the seal his piece of rainbow. Bah, said the seal disgustedly of waving a flipper at Moe's most prized possession. It sounds to me like you're up to no good. It's not a mole's business to be romping up mountainsides looking for someone he's never seen before. Moles are supposed to live under the ground, dig tunnels, and chase worms all day. Didn't your mother ever tell you all that? Please beg, Mo. I've come so far to see the Rainbow Maker. If you'll just let me by, I'll run up this hill, give him this piece of rainbow, and then I'll go home and never come up above again, I promise. The seal softened its voice, but still wouldn't let Mo by. Listen, little mole, your mother wouldn't like you being here. Your father wouldn't like you being here. And I don't like you being here. So why don't you just give up this silly little notion of yours and go home. Everyone will be a lot happier. I guess you're right, said Mo. Everybody would be a lot happier. He turned to go. A tear fell from one of his beady little eyes and splashed onto the piece of rainbow 
making it shine prettier and brighter than ever. Then, as he had done when he'd almost gone back home, when the raindrop had almost drowned him, Mo stopped. Everybody would be happier if I gave up, thought Maurice. Everybody, that is, except me. He hadn't gone this far to be stopped now. Besides, who was this seal who was telling him what he should and should not do? The whole matter was, in fact, none of his business, though, it, though the seal obviously thought it was. Gathering all his courage, Mo turned around to face the seal. Who are you to be telling me what I should and should not do? asked Mo. The seal was so shocked by Mo's remark, it couldn't speak for a moment. But when it found its voice, <clears throat> it barked at the top of its lungs. I am the seal of approval. That's who I am. And what I say goes. Nobody reaches the pinnacle of perfection without checking with me first. It seems to me, said Mo, that nobody has a chance of reaching the pinnacle of perfection if they do think they have to check it out with you first. I bet a lot more folks would reach the pinnacle of perfection if you weren't here, in fact. I'm sorry you don't like my looking for the rainbow maker, said Mo. I really am. I really would feel better if you liked what I was doing. And I'll feel a lot worse if I don't keep looking for the rainbow maker. So, whether you like it or not, I'm going to try to find him. Mo was scared that the seal of approval might hurt him and try to stop him, but the seal was too fat to even move. It was helpless to stop Mo. <clears throat> he walked past the seal and started up the steep rock face of the mountain. You'll be sorry, yelled the seal of approval. You'll never make it to the pinnacle of perfection. Nobody does. But the seal's ugly voice was soon swallowed up by the chilly and whistling across the chilly wind whistling across the rock and over Moe's ears. By this time, the mountainside was so steep and the wind so strong and cold that no grass grew anywhere. Flat gray rock stretched as far as Mo could see to his right and left. Mo had to use both hands and, and both feet to climb the steep rocky cliff, which meant he had to carry the piece of rainbow in his mouth. He inched his way up the pinnacle of perfection. Maurice stopped to take a much needed rest on a narrow ledge halfway up the rocky cliff. For the first time, Mo looked out toward the east from the mountainside. There, laid out before him like a map, was his path through up above. His eyes worked their way across the foothills, over Security's house and the rain cloud covered forest of trouble, and back into the sun-drenched fields of opportunity. It was hazy past there, but Mo was sure he could see a horse-sized spot of watermelon pink, a spot of a different color. Mo thought how beautiful up above looked from way up above. There were so many shapes and colors even the cloud over trouble was pretty from this distance. He wondered if the rainbow maker used some of the colors he saw in up above to make his rainbows. Mo shivered in the cold, barren, in the cold, barren rock as he looked out over the beauty and sunshine of up above, hundreds of feet below him now. 
He wondered what on earth made folks want to reach the pinnacle of perfection so badly when it was so much nicer where they already lived. <clears throat> he was almost to the pinnacle of perfection, and so far as he could tell, it was a cold, barren, lonely wasteland. Mo thought if more folks realized how downright lonely it was on the pinnacle of perfection, they might be happier to stay where they were. But Maurice remembered his lifelong dream of going up above after living in the ground all his life, and he figured people who were born up above in the first place must have a dream to move up in life, too. What a waste, he thought, sadly. The thing that troubled Mo the most, however, was why anybody as nice as the Rainbow Maker would want to live in a place as cold and lonely as the pinnacle of perfection in the first place. He figured maybe the Rainbow Maker was such a nice person that he didn't want to tell others how ugly it really was because that would ruin their dreams of wanting to get there. So, Mo decided, the Rainbow Maker must spend his time making beautiful rainbows for everybody to remind them that their dreams were still alive. Mo figured that everything must have an explanation. Mo knew the Rainbow Maker needed his piece of rainbow back regardless of his reason for living on the pinnacle of perfection. Mo needed to start moving again anyway to warm himself up. He stood up, stretched his tired body, and tackled the cliff once more. The second half of the cliff was even steeper, colder, and harder to climb than the first. At times, the only thing that kept Mo going was the thought of high hopes. Just as he promised, he kept her alive in his fast-beating heart as the going got tougher and tougher. High hopes finally carried him to the end of the rocky cliff. Having reached the end of the rock, Mo stared up and across a several hundred foot stretch of ice and snow. The final stretch. The glare of the setting sun on the ice nearly blinded the poor little mole, and he could barely make out the top of the pinnacle of perfection half hidden in a swirling snow cloud. Only a few hundred more feet to the rainbow maker. As he'd lived his whole life underground, Mo had no idea how slippery ice and snow were. In a rush to reach the Rainbow Maker, Mo hastily stepped on to the field of ice. It was the last step Mo would take on his climb up the pinnacle of perfection. When Maurice slipped and started falling, he didn't know what was happening. He felt himself falling and spinning endlessly through space. He closed his eyes out of sheer fright and held the piece of rainbow tightly in his chest. He felt his flying furry body crash into something hard. The next thing Mo knew, he was lying on his back on something soft. The air was very warm. The air was very warm. Mo couldn't bring himself to open his eyes. Even if he had, his little mole tears would have blinded him. Mo wasn't crying just because the fall had hurt him, although it had hurt a little bit. He was crying because he knew he had fallen from the pinnacle of perfection and he would never be able to climb it. He'd been so close. For several minutes, Mo just lay there feeling miserable, crying through closed eyes. When he did open his eyes, Mo was startled to see three little dogs staring at him. The three dogs, a cockapoo, 
a peek-a-poo, and a plain poodle seemed more surprised at seeing Mo than Mo seemed at seeing them. <clears throat> Nothing surprised Mo very much anymore. <coughs> Where am I? Mo asked the three little dogs, knowing he was no longer on the pinnacle of perfection. He felt awful. You're in the doghouse now, said the peekapoo. For a minute, we thought you were dead. No, I'm not dead, said Mo, though I almost wish I were. He wiped a tear from his eye. I'll go get the top dog, said the cockapoo. The poodle, who spoke only French, said nothing. The top dog will be able to help you, said the peekapoo. You'll be all right. Moments later, a large black and white mixed breed dog ran in <clears throat> into the room. I am top dog, he said to Mo. Are you sure you're okay? You took a nasty fall, you know. That's what I figured, sighed Mo. Yeah, I think I'm okay. Let me guess, said top dog. You were on the final stretch of the, this climb up the pinnacle of perfection. <clears throat> you were in a hurry to get to the top. You slipped and fell on the ice and you landed in the doghouse. How did you know that? Gasped Mo. It happens all the time, smiled Top Dog. I bet I have folks falling through my roof. That's what you hit on the way down four or five times a year. <clears throat> In fact, the reason I built my doghouse here is because the very thing, same thing happened to me three times, in fact. I figured this was as close as I would ever get to the pinnacle of perfection. That's too bad, said Mo. He could imagine what top dog must have felt like falling off the pinnacle of perfection three times. Oh, I've learned to live with it, said top dog. And you know what? Even though I never reached the pinnacle of perfection, I am still top dog around here. He winked at Mo and said, Why don't you stay here tonight and rest up, friend? You could use it. Thanks, said Mo, but I really don't feel much like company this evening. I think I'll just walk for a while and camp in the forest tonight while I think things over. That might be just what you need, said Top Dog. But please, friend, beware of the pits of depression. A lot of folks who don't reach the pinnacle of perfection fall into the doghouse only to fall farther into the pits of depression later on. And if you fall into the pits of depression, there is only one way to get out. And that, I promise, I'll be careful, interrupted Mo. He was in a hurry to leave and it seemed like Top Dog wanted to talk all night. Thanks for the, inf for the invitation, dogs. Take care of yourself, said Top Dog. Have a nice trip back, said the Peekapoo. Don't take any wooden nickels, said the Cockapoo, though he didn't know what that meant. But folks had said it to him before, and it sounded like a nice thing to say. Adieu, said the poodle. Frenchy says goodbye, said Top Dog, but Mo was too lost in his sad thoughts to hear that. <clears throat> As Maurice trudged aimlessly through the darkening woods outside the doghouse, he started feeling sadder and sadder. He stared at the piece of rainbow as it shimmered in the setting sun's last rays. He wished he'd never laid eyes on it. He wished he'd never seen the rainbow it came from. He wished he'd never had the stupid idea to come up above. He wondered for the first time what really did happen to his Uncle Harry. And also for the first time, 
high hopes left her place in his heart. By now, the forest was dark, but Maurice trudged up, not caring at this, trudged on, not caring at this point if he smashed into trees and roots. Suddenly, the firm forest floor gave out from under him, and for the second time that day, Maurice fell. Mo fell for what felt like 50 feet, but luckily he landed on his soft rear end, and he wasn't hurt. Too bad. <clears throat> Mo strained his eyes, but it was too dark to see. He strained his ears, but there was only deathly silence. He tried to climb out, but the walls of the pit were much too steep. He tried to dig his way back home, but the dirt was harder than concrete. Frantically, Mo ran around the floor of the pit, but there was no way out of the inky black, deathly quiet darkness. Then Mo remembered that Top Dog said there was only one way out of the pit. But what was it? Mo had interrupted Top Dog before he'd said. Oh, how could I have been so stupid, Mo wailed into the darkness, but his voice was swallowed up. Too tired to stand, Mo collapsed helplessly onto the floor, and like most folks who land in the pits of depression, Mo started crying. He cried about the stupid mistakes he'd made in the past, and he cried about his dark future. Most of all, he cried about the miserable shape he was in right now. Two tears took the place of each tear, Mo cried. If he hadn't finally cried himself to sleep, he might very well have drowned in his tears. And we will leave Maurice at the bottom of the pits of depression and come back with chapter six, The State of Confusion. Probably be tomorrow night we will wrap up Maurice and the Rainbow Maker from The State of Confusion. See you tomorrow. Bye guys. Did you survive another night of Maurice and the Rainbow Maker? And did my battery survive? My guys. My battery did survive. <laughs>